Okay, guys, welcome to February 15th, 2023 coaching call. Just had a couple of guys enter the room here. So, wow, Bitcoin definitely exploded today. Um, I mean, you can always see these moves in hindsight, right? It's like you don't want to, we, we have to imagine what the information that we had at the time. But, uh, you know, just by seeing some possibilities, I mean, we had, there is institutional level buyers here at this level. Right, even if we didn't get quite to that level, and that's why I labeled this launching point. That was definitely going to be a definite buy zone, right? But what we've had right here is, <laughs> you know, this is a quite a move here. So, so that double bottom to me was pretty obvious. I was so for the sideways up, which got us up to here. But at the same time, you know, um, you know, there was this gap suction, so I was more neutral bullish than neutral but the reason why i was sideways is because i just didn't think we were going to get up all the way up there today we still have the bottom of this range that we tested we didn't get a great reaction so i was just a little bit more cautious it doesn't mean once we have the intraday data that we can't adjust like if we're sideways and we're long we're like we don't have to go short that day once we see like oh wow like <clears throat> even on this 15 minute chart even if we go zoom out to the hourly this was today's zone we Right. Just if you saw this, right, these two, these are not normal candlesticks. We're breaking out of a balance here. Right. So it's it's not as if um, you have to step in front of this. In fact, right, if you were if you made let's just say you made a sideways call and you saw this gap. Right. You have to fade the low of the day. Well, let's just say you you put an order in there and then you just didn't get filled because you didn't jump in ahead of time. As you can see, that's why I don't I don't trade levels. I'm trading price around a, a key reference area, right? And that's why I have two lines here. Now, if there'd be a way I could kind of color code these, like make it light blue, light yellow, and kind of shade it, that would be great. If anyone knows how to do that, that would be awesome. But as for now, there's just two, there's a zone in between. So, you know, at the top of the zone, that gives you that leeway to jump in. But let's just say you didn't, right? Now, I, it's the low of the day, right? I'm not going to post... Uh, a pullback continuation setup when I make a sideways call because I don't want to encourage people to break their calls, right? But we have to, you know, in some sense, more not not chasing will uh, win out more than not ahead of the time. So I'm not encouraging anyone to, let's say you made a sideways call to trade this pullback continuation for a couple of reasons. One, this is pretty late in the day, right? We're late in the day and it's, well, not necessarily late in the day. Let's just put it this way. We've moved far enough away from the low of the day and the overnight where, you know, given the the move, right, there was into this, uh, which I made actually the main resistance zone on the day, uh, there was an action reaction possibility. So it was like, okay, well, if you missed the move and didn't have a runner, it's like, I'm not going to tell people to violate the call in the middle of the channel. But at the same time, you could recognize, well, okay, well, here's a pattern. We broke from this balance. We rested, right? And this is a one, two, three, four, five day balance, right? Well, how how far could this possibly go? In hindsight, let's just pretend we didn't, <clears throat> we don't see these giant, when this thing really started to trend off. But even if we do a modest 100% range extension from here, Right. We could at least say, hey, okay, we're at 100% range extension. We're at this. There's a lot of things to say, hey, maybe this pullback doesn't make, we've meant the, the high of the range. But at the same time, on this hourly chart, while the VWAP is pressing up into it, if I can control, would made me take a quote non-system trade, which I do once in a while, which I really don't post in the room unless I write non-system, is the risk, right? So I have in front of me, think about the stop and target first right and obviously the number one thing is the top down these are just execution monitors right so it's i if i have a if i have a, an urge to break my uh system rule which is a sideways where i'm fading the low of the day now granted this is still a fade setup because a momentum setup would be on a lower time frame right where i would be buying this intraday bounce breakout as it's coming up or fading the pullback as it's happening but once this momentum happens you have to be okay with okay well you know Maybe this thing's dead by now. Maybe I'm just fading support. As you can see, I mean, this balanced for about 7.15 to 13.15. This was at, yeah, I mean, this is this is ours. I mean, this is this is not, 
to be lightly. So I'm not saying you had to take this. If you didn't do anything, that's fine. There's different ways to get on board if you didn't have to fade the low of the day. Now, could you? What would what would make you want to take this trade right here? Which is this is pretty late for me. I'm already asleep at this point. Although when I did see this, I was like, oh, it'll bounce around. I'll get I'll get around there in the morning. My gut was to take that really on first test when it dipped down. I'll zoom out why. I'll zoom out why. But I didn't take it. It's because it's not just, an, you know, this was the news, right? But we did close up high, and now we're pulling back into the top of this balance, right? So broken support becomes resistance. Now, this is not a few-minute balance here. This is one, two, three, four, five. This is a week, almost a week. So this is very notable for intraday positioning, right? So if we're going back to test it now, now, you know, when I'm looking at this, I'm saying, well, this pattern breaking up is smaller than this pattern breaking up, all things being equal, so trading breakouts or trading things into this zone at resistance is very high risk. For example, if you if you did take this as this is breaking out, let's just say you took a non-system trade, you took something that we didn't want, we don't teach, you have horrible trade locations, you're buying at the high day. At least when you're buying a slight uh, pullback, right? You have some trade location, you can use the view app, but just have a tight stop. I didn't even have the view app. I'm like, if this thing either is going to work or it's not going to work or I'm getting out, That that's it. You know, scaling out half here. Now, in hindsight, oh, why didn't you just hold it? Like, I didn't know it was going to have another leg up. Yeah, okay, it could have filled the gap, but it filled the gap so quick here, right? There was no news event where it could snap us out both ways. But, you know, we can't, we really never can predict these things. You can you can look at the daily chart and say, oh, there was, you know, possibility of some beauty principle. We were at this 40 moving average here. We, we, we held up here. Uh, yeah, but I just, you know, you could see this move. You could see this move. But did you really think in one day, that we were going to break all this structure and go up here. I mean, I just, I couldn't predict that ahead of time. Otherwise, I would have made a up to sideways up call. You know, an up call, it means you think there's a high probability that it might just take off, but it also gives you the possibility to, because you think there's such a strong chance of a trend or sustained momentum, for example, at the start of a balanced breakout, like here, right? Which using gap suction, you know, that would have been a great target because you're at the top of this balance. Now, with this VPOC here with 100% range extension, you don't know this thing's going to break here, but that's why you have a runner. Now, uh, a couple things too. It's like, you know, you, related markets, you know, Ethereum, I use a lot of related markets and under the hood stuff for the index, but I don't have that under the hood stuff to get that little edge to see like, okay, like let's say this was the ES and I was like, oh, I missed this low of the day. I can't post it in the room. I think there's good odds for uh, continuation because it's 9 a.m. It's it's not even, it's 30, it's basically the morning bell. It's 30 minutes before the market open. Maybe this has good continue, good ass, continue, maybe this has good continuation odds for continuation because of previous expansions. And I'm willing to take, okay, trade one fourth size. Well, maybe I'll, this is futures, I'm on one contract. But at least if this is the ES, I can look underneath the hood and say, hey, most of the stocks are up on the day as I'm buying this basically non-system based trade that I, because my, my real trade plan was to get in on the low of the day, stay up overnight. If you miss it, you miss it. But after you take in the fact that there's, you know, basically sustain, the price action and volume is a weight on my probability calculation scale. And if that's extreme, it gets a times two. These aren't normal candlesticks. Um, at the same time, I'm, I'm just in principle, not going to buy at the high of the day because I have a mantra it's basically, I'm okay with missing moves that are not part of my low risk entry plan, right? I mean, who's to say, you know, if you uh, kept buying every, oh, this is so bullish, you're just looking at a smaller time frame. Every time you broke, uh, bought this break, if you were buying an intraday balance breakout, it would just snap you back, snap you back. That's why really, if you want to take that setup, which is not a great setup, you have to really take it as it's breaking out. Now you give up terrible trade location, right? So to, in order to take that, you have to have, Good odds for sustained momentum on your side, which means like views are good odds for continuation. You have to have obviously today's bias on your side, which we did. And we'd like to have the larger time frame bias on our side. That's right. Oops. But um, at this point in time, right, or before we had that data, right, you know, the short term is the last couple of days. My, my short term is very bullish. If I just basically... If I could uh, put my hand over this breakdown bar, and I just had these last four days plus this up move, right? I'm um, I'm bullish, but because I'm looking at multiple time frames, because basically time frame analysis is another part of my probability calculation scale that I factor into the daily call, right? I'm also looking at this breakdown pattern, saying, okay, well, what are the odds here? It's like, okay, yes, we could get up here today, but is there? I mean. Is there a possibility that we could 
maybe maybe take a day or two to get there. Yeah. So that's how I'm coming in looking at it. Now, if we go to the weekly real quick. Right. You can you can see even at the start of the week, right? We we've had this last couple of weeks uh breakout pattern, right? We've broken above this structure and now we're even pulling back, right? We have this structure here, which is so basically I can remove this moving average and this structure is a key zone for me. Now, this is just these aren't just random lines. Like, why do I have that there? Well, it's the top of this balance breakdown here. It's a strong bar launching point of directional conviction, multi-week. This is multi-month even. Because each one of these is a week, so one, two, three, four, month, one. So multi-month balance breakdown pattern, breaking straight line into it. Now we're pulling. Now we broke high enough into it to the top of this swing high in the context of this big picture bias down. Then now that when we pull back into this, right, at least on a day time frame, um, at least on a day time frame, right, there's good odds that this thing's just going to keep going down. And what's also showing that this is exhausted in the context of this of this of this trend here is the fact that as it's pulling down, this blue line and the yellow line, right? They're not even penetrating, or at least the the let me just sorry, this will be better if I can remove this. Right? The blue and the yellow line aren't even penetrating the purple zero line here. So that's a zero line reject. Now you have to imagine it as it's coming down. So this is the completed pattern, right? If it, you know, but you have to, you can go back and back test. It's like, what do they look like? Like here's a zero line reject on the upside, right? Like if you were thinking about going short on this double top at resistance and you saw this come up. Now, what's cool about this is that this blue line here is the CCI, right? And the yellow line is the turbo. Right in the in, and I don't want the CCI to be over the blue the uh, the the uh, zero line purple, but I like the fact that the the turbo overshoot that's even greater odds. And look, we had a nice boom. So if you were filling out your daily call, you'd have like, you know, you'd be at sideways to sideways down for support for resist for support resistance because you, we're at a stronger zone. You know, resistance is higher here. Um, you'd have sideways down to even down on the CCI. Right now, you have to really zoom in on the moving average because you're right around it. So there would be nothing really in terms of a dog leash, although you could argue that, well, it'd be more up because we haven't touched these in a while. But that's fine. But that's just one category. I'm just kind of going through the daily call top down. But um, I just wanted to show you that. So here, a little bit less obvious, right, because this is not an overshoot, but there's no perfect in this game. There's no perfect in trading. It's still a zero line reject. Like not everyone has to be as perfect as that short one I just showed you. But uh, nevertheless, they work. So. Um, so that was on our side. The weekly was on our side. Let's go to the monthly. Here, this is just to switch uh, markets real quick. This is just that inverse head and shoulders. But as we're popping up into this, we know as day traders, this is going to be, you know, as Income producing trades are going to be tough because markets just, just don't go straight up on a monthly time frame. There's going to be resistance here and there's going to be turbulence. So let's just switch time. Let's see what Bitcoin's looking like. Bitcoin also gearing up for a bounce breakout, uh, breakout pattern. We broke a lot of market structure, multiple one, two, three, four, four months in one month. So we've, we have, you know, time frames have a line. There's bigger picture players. But uh, we also have to be mindful of this swing high and that there's, you know, there's going to be a story along the way as we get up there. And uh, often these moving averages act as magnets or targets. So uh, as a dog would get pulled back to its leash, like I'm about to go due to my two little boys up there. I just got to go nuts. Uh, there's a good chance that uh, price is going to touch these moving averages eventually. So. Wow, it's really taken off right now. This is crazy. So, yeah, that's sort of just my uh, overall intraday analysis. I'm just going to check the chat real quick. Anybody have any questions? You guys can unmute yourself right now if you want. A little bit less market analysis because I uh, made an uncertain call for ES, so I really wasn't ES focused. I'm also um, setting up a bot <clears throat> again. 
uh, song. I had to do a, a lot of uh, a little bit of tricks to set an API up with the bot, and then you got to set up a quad exit. I'm using Cornex, so I'm going to be uh, using that again. And I have uh, uh, I'm using uh, Bybit because I was really I was like, oh wow, um, USDC uh, on spot if you're going long is zero percent. And then if I want to go on short or whatever, on my futures, it's like 0 0.06 or whatever. So it's a lot better. But uh, does anybody have any uh, trading questions or anything? Uh, you can unmute or chat, but uh, feel free. Did anybody take any trades this week at all? Yeah, so big, obviously, right, this is the, the, the big picture guys are now back into this. Oops. Let's move out of the way. All right, we just, we just took out um, almost a month's minus six days worth of data in one candlestick. Um, it's significant. Well, yeah, paper. That's cool if you're paper trading. I mean, do you have any questions about some of the trades you took? Is anyone ha is anyone finding that uh, scorecard useful that I sent? Now, I'm I'm still working on updating. I'm having a little bit of problem with, with one of the formulas, but it's an ever growing, evolving beast that sheet that I put together. And I could also, if anyone has any questions about that execution matrix which I have, which says trade location, today's bias, sustained momentum, larger time frame bias. That's just something I overlay in my mind um, over like a daily call because I want to, I want to abide by my daily call, but sometimes like your execution energy could whatever. So it's like, if you are taking, let's say a non-system call, right. Um, right. Let's just say you wanted to buy, you were Jones in and you wanted to buy as this is breaking out here. And say you made a sideways call and like, I broke my system, but it broke a range and I think I'm going to make it right. That execution matrix could, at least prevent you if you really follow it from doing something that's incorrect process. So if you did buy this as this breaking out, you would have zero for trade location. I know I sent that to a lot of guys in here. So uh, let me just take that out for a sec here. Uh, let me get mine. Uh, one minute. Okay, uh, can you guys see the Excel sheet? So yes. we just okay, cool. Yes. Um, so if we were if we were gonna um, let's just say that trades here. All right, let's just say you have an urge to not short there, but you wanted to buy. So your trade location is awful, so you don't have that. You, you definitely have today's bias because it's bullish. Sustained momentum, um, yeah. I mean, it's, the candlesticks are bullish, so you have that on your side. Larger time frame bias, right? Let's zoom out. Um, because it's breaking structure, right? It's breaking structure and there's this gap. I know I had this zone here, but when you see the momentum and you see the weight of it, because this technically this the bottom of this balance already was tested and as we're breaking it, you'd give more weight to that. Um let's hang on a second. Uh here it is. That yes, it is. So in that case, that'd be a three star trade. So if it's a two star trade, you're not gonna break this, you're not gonna take a non system trade, right? If if it's if it's uh, three or four, then I guess you have to, right? Uh, right. If it's a one star, right, you shouldn't be taking it. Although, as you can see here, I got into a habit of taking when I thought the largest time frame bias was neutral. Some 
not good one-star trades, but there's a caveat to the system like a computer programmer would have it. I can take one-star trades if the only category is trade location because trade location is king. I don't have trade location in this category, so it has to be three or four. If that makes any sense. So I have this little system in place that's going to help me when I'm making uh, decisions in the fly. I don't even fill it out in real time anymore. I fill it at the end, see if I'm like, oh, taking non-system-based trades. So this one, if I did take that example we did, would be an IBB because it's an intraday balance breakout. Uh, it's not a pullback continuation. Uh, and it's not trap traders. It's not a zone fade for a tradable reaction. A zone fade reversal is a bigger one, right? When you think it's really going to reverse. So that'd be IBB. So you can see I'm mostly zone fading, right? A lot of this last week was zone fade for tradable reactions because it's just maybe one reversal was in there. Yeah, one reversal. And uh, these were blue room trades. And uh, the only thing that I have to do is I have to fix a little bit of this. This is the, this is an updated one that I have to do. One thing I have to do is I want to add a few more coins. So if you guys want to text me that, because right now this is, you could add pretty much any coin you want, but if you want that special Bitcoin and with the ES being multiplied times 50 or whatever, then those, I don't have any, like if you train in the NQ or whatever, whatever the point system is, then it's, I don't have, it's just, but I, I'm willing to keep growing with this thing. So, but yeah, so uh, that's that's definitely useful. Definitely something you guys want to use, even if you're paper trading. Yeah, no, no worries. Yeah, no, it'd be great if there's questions today because usually Corby's on and he's taking over and, and uh, helping me out here. I don't have a ton to say other than the, even the unexpected gives you information because I mean uh, doing a 100% breakout to this up to this moving average that's a fine target I mean which just this was the unexpected so this is like more bullish than we've expected which is really great let's let's break the big zone and let's really go you know what I mean let's really start you could say oh even if you miss this move guys like not everybody's in on this move right so uh, that's fine you're fine with missing moves that are not part of your like why would you buy there right now like, even though you're seeing a pattern and this could just keep going and whatever, maybe the end of the day, it does break this. You're like, oh, my God, really, we don't know this. And the best we can do is follow correct process, not just if, see if we're right or wrong by seeing a pattern, because not every pattern is a setup. Our only goal in this is to think about risk first. And that's why it's risk to reward. Right. If you really can control your risk, you can even take non-system based trades. And I wouldn't recommend taking a lot of them. Even though it's non-system, I'm not going to do something on principle based like, oh, just buy the high of the day or, you know, short the low of the day, right? You know, unless there's certain situations, right, where it's at the start of the open and we're at a balance and there's a lot of things going on and, and you're you're already anticipating a break. You're like, hey, I'm making an up or a down call. And I've done this a few times, not too many times, but I'm making an up or a down call because if this breaks balance, we might not test the low or revisit the high of the day for a short then in that case, I will, you know, buy the breakdown early in the day, get on board early with a couple of different IB, whatever setup, the open drive, the IBB setup, or that pullback continuation setup early in the day, ideally in the first 10 minutes of the 930 Eastern Standard Time open, right? If you're going to use momentum. And, you know, that's what I'm willing to do. But most of the time, I would say, most of the setups, especially a lot of the signals that I give that aren't POIs to market, but are like, hey, limit order here. Like they're not uh, momentum setups, they're location based because most of the time the markets are going sideways. And even on a day like today, which um, obviously you could use momentum to get in, the best setup was location. It just, uh, you know, like I say, get in when it's super quiet, right? Um, that's when it's boring. That's when you want to get in. You can see this was a nice double bottom at this zone, which I didn't mark blue today because we're not up there. Let's uh, let's zoom out a bit. Now, yeah, this is this is this may be one of those situations where it's like, think about. It, let's just say if we closed right now, right? We are right at the top of this balance. We're straight line up into it. I mean, if we break this on conviction, this could be a major, this could be the start of, let's, if we zoom out on the daily here, 
I don't want to get people too excited, but let's just say we break this. Like, you know, we just, we broke this little structure and we got this, right? We break this structure, we, we, we can maybe get this. Then if we break this on conviction, then we break this fractal and then we're really taken off. Um, and that's when my time frames would be aligned to the upside and I give more weight to support than resistance. So you'd see maybe more uh, long type stuff. And even though a lot of times with sideways, you can, you can, the, the shorts are just as good, right? Sideways, you can, I, I think I posted one day a long and a short in a day, uh, which is not something we do too much because it's, let's just be consistently profitable, right? That's the goal. Speaking of which, if, uh, if everyone today uh, has brought stereo headphones, we can do a, um, psychology session with it's going to have binaural beats it's basically the theme of the psychology session it's not technical so you could even like almost fall asleep to it and it's still going to program you it's basically programming right it's programming you to be consistently profitable which means not chasing which means not following which means having abundant mindset and uh, doing all the right things it's about nine minutes and uh i think it would kind of balance out today's more market-based technical type discussion uh, of expectancy because this is this this is a, this is a notable move. I mean, we are breaking uh, since January twenty first, right? Multiple like when you break market structure with conviction. Now we move straight line to the balance, so it's not like I'm thinking, oh man, I can't wait to buy a breakout after a you know a big trend day like this, right? But at the same time, if we do that with because we're at that context, you know, there's a, there's a setup called the contextual alignment breakout setup. If you have a key zone that we are breaking with conviction then, you know, there's a good chance that things could run. Now, the problem most people do is because they're anticipating it, they buy it ahead of time and they're getting chopped up, right, before it happens. That's why, you know, the quad exit really solves those problems because at these inflection zones, they're not low risk. You know, that's why I come in with a neutral short term, neutral intermediate, and then a bearish big picture bias because if we zoom out, it's still down in, in Bitcoin and in ES. You know, that's why I come in with that uncertain neutral bias, because we are at these inflection points. And even though the tr the recency of the leg count, the trends with this, you know, until we actually break it, we can get a lot of volatility and a lot of shop both ways. So we have to actually ask ourselves, how how is price approaching the, the zone? Right. Are we moving straight line into it? Where we can get an action reaction or are we getting this kind of creeping pattern? Right. Where price can break it. Now, you can even just see a general sense between when, at least recently, like on the shorts, like these things really move fast, right? And then they kind of act in reaction when we start bouncing. The, the buyers are a little bit more hesitant, right? They creep up, creep up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Nothing, you know, and then they creep, double distribute, creep. And then we get that strong move. But you can see really, I mean, if you were on the short side during this, this leg here, I mean, you were really hitting some pretty big moves and, and they, they, uh, they resolve themselves faster. The, the problem with my time zone is that uh, a lot of the shorts happen in the rotation on the sideways, sideways down around uh, the time when I'm actually getting up, uh, falling asleep, because I actually get up around four o'clock sometimes in the morning, around 4.30 in the morning, four, sometimes even three. So it's around that time. So it's like to trade around 11 p.m. to, to 1 a.m. is when those nice sideways down double tops are happening. That's when like uh, the West Coast guys or European guys can hit that. Boys, they're playing with the cat. They're getting along really good, which is really good. So when we talk about different directional type days, like, you know, this would be distribution up, right? So in my mind, when I'm taking that non-system based trade, I'm thinking, okay, well, we have a double distribution up day, right? Ma imagining it ahead of time up distribution and then break out. That's that double distribution because not all trends are just going to be creeping higher highs and higher lows on the upside uptrend and then, you know, lower lows, lower highs on a downtrend. There's different types, right? And, uh, but there's, there's different types, but there's categories that uh, seem to occur in higher frequency than other categories because uh, patterns repeat themselves because human behavior is cyclical and really doesn't change. The distribution is just like, hey, we agree on price, we reject price. We agree on price, we reject price, and uh, it's actually a safer way to get in on a on a, on a trend day than 
than a pure trend day because a lot of times in pure trend days, people get too excited and they get chopped out on them too much. Obviously, it would be best if you had the patience. And this was at, but yeah, I, I was just up. But instead of going right to the computer, sometimes I'm up right to the computer on this time. I did that super performance morning routine that I linked uh, because I just need the, the vibes of, I needed to increase the vibes. And I'm like, okay, the first thing I'm going to do in the morning is at programming uh, because I got new goals and new experiences. I actually have a client now that uh, wanted me to trade on his money so he could start a fund. So I'm actually got a, a sample test amount of somebody else's money that I'm trading for a fund. And the thing is that when you start trading other people's money, you start trading their psychology. So it's it's a whole new ball game, but I'm excited to do it. And that's why I set up that bot again because I was like, okay, well, it'd be nice. I don't need to go into this this exchange right now. Let's just do this API uh, which if you're going to be in an exchange and do it anonymously, it's, uh, it's always, uh, it's always good to use an API and not use the United States or Canada or those other countries, but that's a whole other story. Um, Matthew. Yes, um, sir. Yes. Can you, can you tell us something about the, the API you're using or trying to use, um, in order to perform the, the quad exit? Yes. How, how, yes. How's that stuff working? Uh, so, I'm curious. okay. So, I uh, I have a good friend of mine who's a, is a was the guy that he was he worked there for years, and then in 2019, uh, when it was first open, they were looking for traders to help them set up something, something. And then me and Corby were trading for somebody else on a fund, and uh, we said, okay, let's do this quad exit. So we were actually helping them create tools for the bot along that time. So it was great. So basically years later, I've used it on and off, right? So we set the quad exit up into it, which is great. Now I have a test. I, I, I don't trade my own money on it anymore because me and Corey were talking about yesterday. There is some, there's advantages to it. And there's disadvantages. You, obviously if you're on an exchange and you press the button on the exchange, it's way faster. Right. And I thought about just um, doing this business proposal on Binance.us, but it's like, man, just to start out, they take, you know, and then it's like completely on the books. It's not in the spirit of crypto. It's like, if, if these guys want to go do it in Estonia or in Act 22, it's like, then, then we'll do it. That's what we want to do. But until then, you know, let's just do this test amount and see where we're going. Now, the way the API works with the bot is that, you know, you, you can't withdraw from the bot, but you can send it limit order signals. You can go right to market. And so right now what I've done is that, you know, I did some research. I found, okay, it was, it was, you know, the exchanges that I, that, uh, you might use, uh, to train on might not be particularly associated with the spot. Right. So, uh, let's just say you're in, you know, finance.us, they don't use that. Right. So, but Bybit they do, uh, I believe KuCoin they do regular Binance they do. So they, they have a variety of them. So we, we basically, I set this up um, today. We set it up. You, you get the API from the exchange. You set it up. But with the, with the great thing about the bot, right? Like with the quad exit, right? When you're on an exchange, and this is the this is the disadvantage of not using the bot, is that when you're on the exchange using any type of it, there's uh, any type of quad exit. You have to do a lot of manual, mechanical, OCO type stuff. Order, cancel, order. Where it's like, okay, well, then I move my stop to break even. I took half off, so when I create the new stop order, I got to cancel the old one. Make sure I do that. God forbid I forget. And then I, when I move my stop to break even, I got to like you know make the new order half. It's a lot of little buttons. And now what this thing does, and um, the picture's worth a thousand words, so I'll go up here. Let's see. Um, yeah. So this is this is this is how it works. Can you guys see the bot? Yeah, I can see something. Yep. Yeah. So mm -hmm. let's say uh you create a trade, right? I go free text, right? I go this is just a a test. I'm not really gonna allocate it. We got a, a test amount on here. Let's just see. The price of Bitcoin is twenty-four. So let's do um Yeah, we could do this one. We could do this one because it's not going to hit that one. So we'll, then we'll just cancel it. So, right, I, this is, uh, so we'll just, we'll copy this, right? 
just basically like a year ago, I was using this all the time. And like some of the guys that kn knew my posts from uh, Fractal, I would always post what this looks like. I would always be doing it. But uh, this is, I haven't used it in a while just because, you know, uh, Kobe's, I say, hey, it's, it is quicker. It is quicker to do it on the exchange. You can sometimes, like, you know, when you get the API signal, that's one extra hurdle. Now, I don't necessarily mind it because sometimes I put those automatic limit orders ahead of time. And, but let's just say you, this is where the disadvantage is. Now, let's just say like 21,800 is my, is a good zone. I'm like, okay, when it gets down there, I, I, I don't care. But let's just say I'm so bullish on that day that it's like hovering at 2,200. I can hit go to market, even though my limit order is there, but then it's like, you know, you got to wait a few seconds. It's, it sometimes waits 10 seconds. Now the longest that we've ever waited was 30 seconds, which is forever in trading. So there's like, that was like the longest on our sample size that, you know, that we did. So there are some disadvantages. Now you hit here right uh i have different accounts for different things because i the, the way that i have this set up i'm not writing so if it was futures i would type in times whatever leverage i want then it goes to buy bit usdt or whatever that's the futures this is spot i'm, I'm choosing spot usdc because it's got zero fees for this uh particular development fund that we're doing i hit my buy bit spot i hit confirm and then it's like you know you pick out which amount of capital you want um, let's just say I say 100%. Do you want to cancel the trade when the first uh, profit takes you, you hit uh, no, something, something. Now, I'm not going to hit no because then it's going to actually ha have the order go. And uh, but uh, because the order is so much lower than it, it wouldn't get filled. But just to just to not even have to cancel. But that's that's just that's how simple it is. Like once you click that, it's the, this thing is in the books, right? Actually, let's hit back, right? Then I'll do a small amount, uh, just in case. We'll do like five percent. Hit no. Trade was successfully opened, not obviously filled, right? I go here. Trade wasn't filled, obviously, right? And then I would just go because I, I don't, obviously this is not a trade I want to do. I hit cancel trade. Cancels the trade. This is so much easier. Now, once I once let's just say I like I wanted that order and that order was filled. As soon as it hits my first target, it automatically takes half off, automatically moves my stop to break even, takes half off that. So basically you can put this on overnight and go to bed. So there is there's benefits to this, too. You know, I'm not saying there's not. I use this. I use this all during the, the whole bull run on multiple exchanges. I just, uh, as I'm up in my game here, I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna. I'm also trading the ES, so I actually don't have an API for that. Why don't you just go trade on the exchanges? Like Kobe said, it's, the exchanges are faster to market, but this is way less buttons to press to make a mistake. I mean, if you, how many people? Have, I mean, I've made a mistake on trading the ES with the quad exit because I, I got so used to this for a while that when I switched over, uh, I think it was last May to do both or whatever to charge trading this too. I, uh, I was like, wow, I have to execute on a platform now, move the stop to break even, move half. One time I had that limit order actually, and I forgot to move it. And I had two, I had two sell orders on. Right. I was like, what, wait, why am I long and short right now? I'm like, Oh my God. So there is, there is some benefits to this. Obviously like once you make your limit orders less like, there's less chances of that, but there is still execution possibility errors that you can make, even if you have a, a winning trade idea. So I would, I highly recommend it. I've used it before. Uh, like I said, if you go to market, the exchanges are quicker. But uh, if you like Telegram, if you're already on, like I'm on, tele, another reason I went back to it again is I have multiple computers here. I'm like, well, how cool would it be to just, this new project I'm doing, I have my stuff, I have PPT, and now I have this other project. I'm like, I have to have at least something on here so I can not have to be toggling. I can make a trade and monitor it. And if you if you like uh, following signals or I trade ideas from these channels and you use this, it's like you can, you're executing right in this channel. Now, there's a couple of different ways. Now, I hit create trade. I hit free text. That's if you, I love this text message stuff because it's like, it's very, for the guys that are, um, you know, maybe you're paper trading still, like Carl, you said you're doing paper trading. Um, send it to your friend or create a dummy channel in your save channel and actually text it like this. And that's your, um, that's how you could actually execute if you want to use the spot eventually, because then it's like not much difference. Now, let's just say you don't like that. You don't like the text message, which I don't know why you wouldn't. You could do this guided one, right? You could do regular breakout. Let's just say regular. They guide you step by step, in other words, but it's like they ask you like 10 or 12 different questions. It's really annoying. If I highly recommend um, 
create trade, free text, because if you go create order, or put your limit order, then you got to type it in. Is it this? Is it that? Then you got to go here. Do you want your market? Stop that. It's just too much. Way too much. Now, these, these always put to limit. Now, here's a trick. Here's a trick with this. Let's just say you said, hey, Matt, I like that. But how do I, I know? But let's just say that the price was like right here. And you're like, I want to buy this breakout right now. Can this bot do that? Yes, it can. It's going to be slower than actually going to market and hitting buy. But what you can do is you let's just say that it's breaking out and it's breaking out around 21,800, right? And you're like, this thing's breaking out. I do not, I want to buy at 21,800. I don't care. 21,800. In one, 21, 802, 21, whatever, whatever, 798, I don't care. But you want to get into market right now. You go here, just pick an, any number higher, just pick an artificially higher number to go long. I just pick a thousand points higher because it's not there and you're going long on a higher, it'll take you right to market. It'll take you right to market. And I got to say, the last time I started, because I was doing this, this is how I was actually getting in quite a bit uh, about six, seven months ago. I was just going right to market like this. It's obviously more efficient if you have a limit order, but sometimes you want to go to market. This is the, the way to do it. Now, what you can do ahead of time is you can put a limit order at a really good zone that you think, hey, this thing probably might not get here. If it does, I'll take it. But when you have an order already on, which I, you know, the one before when I canceled it, you can actually from there hit go to market and you can actually take that thing, go right to market. Now, one of the mistakes that I made a couple of times when I used to do that with this bot is when you hit go to market with your limit order, if, for example, the price has gone even higher than your sell prices, it can actually get you out. So just like make sure don't go so quick that you forget things. You might have to just redo your sell prices and make them higher, which you can do that when your order is already on by going to edit. Now, the short... Is pretty easy too. I'll show you how to short. Now, so the, the the equivalent would be basically to sort of um, um, put limit orders uh, OCO ones in 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 the platform, right? So you basically would split up the the whole trade into three pieces. Uh, so the the first fifty percent, then the 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 first target twenty five percent of the size, and and the rest. So you have actually three orders laying in the platform um, and, and to those orders, you have the OCO orders attached to. You know so, what? A, a picture's worth a thousand words. Let me go to, I'm going to go to my tech advisor's channel because I sent <coughs> him, uh, I think it was this really early this morning or last night, a couple of dummy test trades. Let's do yeah. it. So, yeah, you so see, basically, if, yeah, you see, if, if I, if, if I, I actually have to fix, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> so, so basically, if I understand you, um, that the whole thing, um, so so it's handling the the limit orders, and if you get filled, um, then you basically into trade, and then it manages your trade. That Correct. means, um, basically, if the price exceeds your financing target, then uh, the first fifty percent will be uh, gone through um, the potential limit order, but then it will potentially raise the the stop to break oh, even, right? Yes. So you, you can okay. you guys see this trade that I opened on Cornex and I was like, success. This is this is my tech guy that helps me do all this. Now, one of the things I just realized here that we did set up the quad, but because I haven't used this in such a while, it reverted back to this one third, one third, one third. So I'm glad you asked me that. I didn't even see that because I'm trying to do this so quickly to get up to, to, to trade on this fund so we can really start doing this. Um, so what I did, so what this will do once we fix this, because right now what it'll do is that as soon, let's just say I got in at twenty one eight hundred, and then I took pro, and then it, and then it hits twenty two nine 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 nine. Then it'll take third off. Then it'll move my stop to break even, and then it'll recalculate like the total amount that I have to lose. But what this really will do with the quad, which I'll do when when me and Rickus meet later on tonight, is that this will now say fifty percent, twenty five, and twenty five. Because you can set this any way you want, and then it, and then basically yeah, then it would take half off on your first target. Whatever your stop is, it's going to then move it to break even. So then one of the things that I don't like about this, though, is that if you go to your histories for your data, after you finance and, you're, and the, you take half off and your stop goes to break even, when I say you take half off, I'm sorry, when the bot takes half off, you don't have to do a thing after you press the text message unless you want to edit your trade. Mm -hmm. One of the things I don't like about it is that when you go to your history to then record your data in your Excel file, 
the stop loss order, once it moves to break even, will show break even. And I'm like, whoa, fuck. I didn't have time to write down what my stop was. What was my stop? And I have to like sometimes go back into the channel and say, oh, did I type it in? And then you have to freaking, if you don't have it, you just guess. So really, so what I so what I did is I have my other computer open here. I just write down what my stop is on a scratch, and then I write it in later. But other than that, those are the little quirks with it. But uh, to be able to go long and short uh, from Telegram on a like I'm in the U.S. We have we don't we don't have crypto freedom over here. I have to use a VPN to to access Bybat to trade on a low. Uh, cost super tax free uh, account. You know, I coughed the bullet and just like, you know what? I have Pro Coinbase, there's Binance US. I have these other exchanges too. But, you know, the idea is that if they do, uh, if you do go in there, you know, if you're trading on there and you do uh, your VPN gets whatever, your cat clicks your VPN off and they, so they see the United States, they can technically freeze your account. And say, hey, where are you? You're not supposed to be here. And they could like seize your crypto. But what I have is because I'm using a South African VPN, my tech advisor, who's a really good friend of mine, I've been teaching him trades for a long time and he helps me with this. And he also works for this fund now. Uh, he, um, he'll, he'll basically just, uh, what's the right word? KYC the account for me if I need to. Because we just have, this is just a development fun right now you know i think that we started off at 25k then we're going to do 100k after a month and then we're going to really do it with funding and maybe we'll do something huge and it'd be great if i have enough money to uh do the things i want to do in terms of hiring the people that i wanted to hire uh, and really expand ppt because right now i can you know i need to hire more folks but i got this parallel project right now so yeah this is this is going to be exciting uh to do this because the possibilities to do this are huge because uh, I really want to see what this the, what the quad exit's going to look like on an eight figure account. Um, that's that would be great. Got to perform though, right? So, yeah, hopefully that Vic clarifies some of your questions. Do you have more questions about the bot? We can keep going. No, no, thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much yeah. for the insight. Uh, now, if you want to uh, change the coin real quick. You just, you know, BTC, whatever it is. Now, if you want to uh, short it, now this is this is the format to spot. Like once you have the format, I just use this over and over again because I finally got it to work. And then I'll just change it if I want to change when I change, do, do need to change it. But if you want to short, you have to use this one that looks like this. You have to write uh, for this particular one because I just hooked this one up again, Bybit USDT. Yeah, because there is no benefit to USDC. But the cool thing about it is that the uh, it's not it's not 0.1 percent and 0.1 percent on the way, way in and out like I've been used to. For it's like 0 0.06 and uh, whatever I wrote it on the I posted it on the channel. I think 0 0.04, way cheaper, way cheaper. So 0 0.01 and 0 0.04 percent. You write leverage times one because I don't use leverage. The account's going to be leveraged, but if you're a gambling man, and we did we did last night do a test run with leverage. We didn't execute it, but we put the limit order on far enough away. We did 10x just to see if we could, and that did work. Now, there's little quirks. This took a long time. That's why I haven't been posting the last two days, but I'm going to share this information. Like For a while, we had the X separated, and it didn't work. It's just like annoying things like that if the spaces aren't right. So we finally got this all to work. Now, he works there. He worked there and helped develop this. That's why he's an expert on it. If I was doing this on my own, I'd have to go to the community and figure this out. I'd be still, I'd be still scratching my head. I'm not like super techie like this. So he uh, set this all up. You get leverage one uh, X. I just want to make sure that, yeah, the one X. Let's just show you what it does. Oop, I got hit. I have to create trade. Then you have to hit free text. Then I'll go copy text. Then I'll go paste. Then I'll go hit. Oh, stop prices must be above current. Yeah, I just, sorry, I was just using this old one. Yeah, but that's how you do it. You would type this in, you hit 1X, and then it's just going to pick, it's just going to go to the, the futures exchange. Now, one thing that's kind of annoying that you can't do here, but it's a, it's a security feature. Like, if someone if someone hacked into my computer right now, and I had someone do this once on a call once, this was like two years ago. 
on a Zoom with them, more or less. They 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 tr- they try they basically. This is when I was trading on the bot full time, and I had two hundred seventy five k on a Binance account hooked up to a bot. They took control of my mouse, went over here, went right up here, hit this, and was trying to go right in. I turned it right off. I was paying. It was like it was it was nuts. So I was like, okay, this is this is crazy. But even if they did get in here, they can't withdraw the funds. The worst they could do is just put on a really bad trade. So what I'm trying to say is that the downside of that is that if you do want to transfer between your your spot and your derivatives account, because you know if 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 the if the uh, derivatives long price was cheaper than my spot long price at Bybit, I would just do everything derivatives long. I don't care, you know. But because I'm using USDC now for long because it's zero percent on this exchange, which is awesome, and because when I go short, I have to then do this thing with the derivatives and I don't want to go long with the derivatives because it's cheaper to go long with spot and USDC and the charting I did the back testing on a little bit it's similar enough where it's not that big of a deal they're off by a little bit but you can have two open it's not that big a deal uh, it's definitely makes sense why not to save money on that you know but uh, if you do if you you know but for um the future side, the derivatives, it doesn't make USDC is not going to save you anything over Tether. There's no deal for that. So use the one X. Uh, just that's just the basic one to use it. You have to, even if you want, you could say, man, I don't want any leverage. Well, you still have to use leverage one X. That just means you're just doing it times itself once. It's no leverage. So, yeah, that's 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 how you would short it. And oh, so let me just show you a short, a successful short. Hang on a sec. Um, No, oh, that was a long. Yeah, short derivative successful. So, so yeah, basically it's the same thing, right? You have to you type that in leverage one left, but the only thing is that of course your entry order is going to be. Lower in price than your stop order. My stop at two three zero nine nine. Entry was two three zero nine nine. Of course, all the profits are lower, and it does the same thing. It does the same. You don't have to type in short. It does it for you. You just have, the shorts activated when the entry when the you know when it's a short when you when the stop is less when it's higher than the entry, and then it does it for you. You have to also just do the one x thing, right? And then you're good to go. And uh, what's cool about that is that you could put that order on. You could do, you know, one of the problems of putting on a quad exit, even if you follow my automatic orders where you could put it in overnight, even if you're at work, you, you know, you might check in on Telegram, oh, first target's hit. And then your first target was hit. And you're like, oh, wait a minute. Uh, I got to move my stop to break even, but my boss and I are in a meeting now and I can't. But if you do this with this, and I don't get like a kickback. I don't know. The, the owner is, is uh a greedy son of a gun. I don't know, but my friend doesn't like him, so I don't get anything out of this. But the but the bot's good. I gotta say, the bot is good. You know that because you know, like you said, you could that OCO is going to be handled. Let's say you're in the meeting with the boss, your stop's going to move to break even. You're already good. Your orders are going to be headed, put ahead of time. Um, you know, the only thing is, if like I said, if you put in a uh, this order ahead of time and it's you know, your it doesn't get filled and it moves ahead of time, and you didn't go to market. Well, you know that's why you that's why we watch it. You know, if we were if it was if I had more of an edge just in swing trading, I would just put these orders on and leave. But you know that's why we watch it more intraday, like day trading too, because we miss those opportunities if if it, on those aggressive moves. Like that's why I have those yellow zones, because a lot of times I'm saying, hey, divergence at this and double bottom at yellow. Hint, hint. That's a that's an entry. You know, I got to see a couple more things there to get in, but. I would take it there because if I do get stopped out, I have the psychology to also get in at initial support if the context is saying it. You know what I mean? So, but yeah, guys, I ho- hopefully that uh, that answers some of the bot questions. Now, there's different packages for it. Um, they range from like thirty dollars a month to six hundred a year or something. But uh, if you the basic one will handle everything you need for the quad. It's like, I I, I think it, the, the, the pro package, I think is like, if you want to give signals out to other people, like like a hundred other people or something like that, or to your telegram channel. So it's like, I'm not, I'm just trading on one account uh, for a private investor fund to do this. And the performance is there after two months, we keep going. And um, 
Yeah, I don't really, I don't need to do that, so. Has anyone ever used a bot or something like that before or anything like that? Because a lot of times when people when people say bots, they think like, oh, it does it for you. I'm like, well, no, it doesn't do anything for me. I'm, I'm doing, I, there is no bot that does it for you. I, I've yet to see one. Uh, I had an interview with a quant fund two years ago and I was talking with Corby ahead of time, ahead of time. And the guy, I don't know who it was that finally admitted they're like, yeah, they're 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 not consistently profitable because it's like this thing varies so much that it's like once you program in something that a human would have to do anyway. But it's like you got to program something again to change it again anyway. So it's like you might as well just trade it live. And so that's everyone wants that magic algorithm, but I don't know. It would be great to to have something for normal markets to, to yeah. trade ES, etc. But I um, would, yeah, I wish they did too, because that's that would help me out. But yeah, if they had a bot for the ES, that would be they might, I don't know. I didn't really ever look into it. I just I always associated bots with crypto because everyone wants to reduce their exchange risk. Yeah. So what did you guys? I mean, what did you guys think? Was that is the bot is that impressive? Is it something you guys could uh, use? It's definitely something that could make the quad exit more efficient. The downside yeah, is, sure. yeah, you I mean there's a there's a cost to it every month, and then there's also the fact that if you are a guy that likes to go to market a lot, instead of put a limit order a lot, then you're maybe better off at an exchange. But, you know, teach their own, you know, pros and cons. I'm going to give it a shot with this. Uh, yeah, sure. But but actually, the, the use case, which you just mentioned, being at work, um, being stuck in a, in a meeting, you know, and um, then one of your orders um, basically hits um, and you have to react and cannot get out of the, yeah. the meeting. So yeah. for, for that, it's perfect. And um, I like the idea to, to sort of, uh, uh, yeah, support the trading. Um, well, what I'll do is I'll, I'll reach out to Dory. Like years ago, the owner was like small enough where he would like talk to a, a guy who was helping him out like me. So I'll be like, okay, I got a channel. I got this channel. Can you give us a discount? Can you give my guys a discount? I'll see if they'll send something over. I'll post it on the channel. Okay. But um, yeah, it's uh, then you just get the API key. You create the key from the exchange, and then you slap it in there, and then yeah, um, It definitely makes it more efficient. That's for sure. Um, on, on a momentum type trade, if you were trying to get on on this, that would be what you would do is like, let's just say you wanted to buy up here. Like I said, you you would if the price was at two two four seven zero, you know you're you're don't you you can't like get greedy and put it at uh, two four, I don't know six eight or something on a pullback or six nine or just like a little below it or whatever or even ten twenty points below. Be what you want to do is if you want to go right to market, right? Put it, put it, just pick a price, any price. I always pick like a way higher price, a thousand points higher. It's easier, whatever, change it. And then it just snaps it right onto market when you, uh, when you press the button. But there is a delay. It'll, sometimes I'll, I'll let you know. I haven't done a to market test yet because I haven't done a real fill yet. Uh, because there is no more test trades. There's now development funds on there. And we're ready to go. So, but yeah, that's what you would do. You just put an artificially high number on a long or an artificially lower number on the short. And, uh, but yeah, obviously an exchange just hit the market and how much would be way better, way better. But yeah, guys, that's it. Um, uh, that's, that's my, uh, what I want to talk about today. Um, if Corby was here, he'd take over, but, uh, he's, uh, He's got business to attend to today, so but uh, he'll be on the next one for sure. So yeah, we'll wrap up here today. Thanks for coming on. Uh, if you have any last questions or whatever, you can type them in the channel or on mute. Uh, but other than that, oh sorry, Mark. Hey, yeah, Mark says he's got to go. He's struggling with COVID. Yeah, try that uh, nettle tea. Nettle tea is supposed to be really good for COVID. It's actually I read an article on it. Uh, see if I can find it. It says it's actually a really good cure for it. That can help. Uh, what, what kind of tea? It's called Nettle Tea, N-E-T-T-L-E. -E. I'll type it in the channel. Okay. You could even maybe search on it. Nettle Tea helps COVID with COVID, and you'll see that article. Nettle Tea for COVID.
flu or whatever. The flu, uh, NLT for the flu. Nice. But yeah, guys, um, thanks for coming out. And uh, yeah, we're going to step up the game. There's going to be an exciting, I think it's going to be an exciting year to trade the market as we're gearing towards the halving event. Because if you remember, like, you know, everyone's like, oh, the bull run started, bull run started. Yeah, but let's see what the end of the year is like. I'd, I'd be more confident when things start moving at the end of the year that we're going to be into that having bull run. Then we'll start seeing that up market. That's even a steep up market where it's like you, you're, every previous high volume node can be a, can be an entry point. You can make a living like that. Now those are, those are those fun markets, but uh, right now we're learning how to do it during these sideways chop up markets. And uh, once we get to the prepare us for the greener pastures, you know? So, all right, guys, adios. We'll see you on the next one. Peace.